Well, good morning, good day, good afternoon. I'm not sure where you're at in the time zone of the United States. I'd like to welcome you to today's Lunch and Learn uh, for making the TechDB work for you. So we're gonna try to go through this hour and try to explain some of the uh, whitewash of what you can help yourself out with the TechDB, tech uh, creating a machine, creating some, uh, setting up a maybe a toolbox, just a short, uh, version of it and from that I'm going to get started so if anybody has any question like um, Bob said let's go ahead and uh, throw them in the chat towards Don Glasky and that should take care of uh, he can answer those as we go through uh, today's meeting or he can answer them at the end of the call so what are we going to cover today? Um, default strategies, tool crib setup, copy and create some tools, machine setup, update TechDB to a new version. So throughout this uh, hour that we're going to spend together, we're going to kind of uh, go through some of this uh, illustrations to help you through understanding a little bit about the TechDB, how it works, how, how to uh, get around it how to make sure you got a backup, how uh, to bring in an old tech DB that you've been working in. You just load a new version so we can actually import that new version into um, the latest update that you just went through. So a little bit of noteworthy information. We're gonna go through default uh, feature strategies, current feature strategies, and where to find them. So before accessing the techno technology database, uh, one thing we want to make sure we do is make sure our solvers is not running. Uh, the default location is shown there as C, program data, SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS CAM, what version you're, you're running, tech DB. But before you move on, we really suggest you make a backup copy. Now, if you're one of our customers, we certainly encourage you to go to support and we can uh, help you through the process of making that backup so you can uh, be able to update without having uh, losing your TechDB. Uh, how to access the TechDB, there's uh, without opening SOLIDWORKS. So there's a couple ways you wanna do that. Uh, but the easiest way, there is, there's actually a TechDB uh, app that we can access. Uh, it's under C program files, uh, SOLIDWORKS Corporation, SOLIDWORKS CAM, uh, mine just happens to be version four, technology database app. Just right click on it. I suggest to create a, a um, shortcut to it on your desktop. So let me show you those locations uh, for, this is a tech DB. Ronnie, while so you you're, see that, while you're bringing that up, um, yeah. just, just a quick side note. Um, the only person that they can direct chat with right now is me and you. So oh, anybody, okay. if anybody have any questions, go ahead and send them to the CTI host and I'll filter those over to Don. Okay. So inside, now this is two different locations. So where the app is, is under C, Program Files, SOLIDWORKS Corporation, SOLIDWORKS CAM, like I said, mine just happens to be version four because all the versions I have loaded and technology or tech DB app. So right here it is. We can right click on it and of course create a shortcut and then move that to your database. So what's good about the app is that you can actually access the tech DB without opening SOLIDWORKS. There's a lot of times you're gonna to wanna to get in there and kind of play around a little bit. But again, before you do that, let's uh, really talk about making a backup. So the second part of this, I wanna talk a little bit about the TechDB and what I've done. Notice that the TechDB in SOLIDWORKS is located at C, Program Data, SOLIDWORKS, uh, SOLIDWORKS CAM 2020, and TechDB. So what I've done is actually created a zip file of it. This is always gonna be my backup. You notice the dates, I just actually uh, unzipped it today. It'll help you refresh your TechDB. So as you're making changes, go ahead and make changes. It's, uh, we encourage you to make changes, save your tech DB, go to this path, find the tech DB itself, 
uh, re-zip it so you, as you work your way through all the different processes, this will help you uh, always stay up to date and not kind of lose, you know, uh, where you were. And you can actually create multiple zips in that process, so it'll help you out as far as uh, being able to um, uh, have that backup without causing any issues. Once you get into the to copy the TechDB database or technology database or knowledge base, we say it a lot, a lot of different ways. We refer to it in a lot of different ways. First thing is the TechDB. There's only one version in your SolidWorks, but it has inside the TechDB. There's two versions, English and metric. So when you're working in either one, you want to make sure. And I'll point it out where the English and metric is. Um, which one you're working in, so you know that you're updating the correct one, building machines in the right location, and then save the tech DB will not transfer between versions. So you can't just pick the tech DB up that you liked in 2019 and move it to a 2020 folder. You'll have to import it. So I'll kind of show you that process uh, as we go on. Again, there's the technology database. I showed you the zip file and the location of where it's located at. <clears throat> and our create shortcuts. Make sure we uh, do uh, create the shortcut, put it on your desktop. It'll uh, save you a lot of time. And it'll keep you from having to open SolidWorks to be able to get that. So what I'm going to do now is we're going we're gonna to open up a technology database. And I just my little app that I have here. All right, so inside that, <clears throat> you can see that uh, when you walk in here, you when you open up the technology database, you see that we have mill, turn, mill tooling, mill, turning tool, feeds and speeds, settings and about. So <clears throat> this is the single technology database for SOLIDWORKS. Notice it says 2020. Inside here, we also said we have two different versions of it. There's your metric and your inch in this process. So what we want to start out with is some default strategies that we want to look at. SolarWorks kind of set you up with some default strategies, let you kind of work off of a file that you already have. So the easiest way to do that is to take and copy this default strategy. Once it's copied in there, you can actually rename this and just uh, name it as possibly demo. <clears throat> Once you have that, you can kind of come down here and, and set up all the different types of, of strategies that you would like to use. In a rectangular pocket, you may not always want to use the rough, rough finish, rough, rough, rest, rest finish, or rough finish edge break. So there's a lot of different uh, items that you can actually choose here. And you can just kind of come down through here and update the ones that you want to update. Now, as you do this, want to make sure that you do save it at the, uh, make sure that you do save your copy. Default descriptions, it, it is default by description. You can actually say, hey, this is going to be for my my Haas machine for a uh, description. So we're going to go ahead and just save it. Now we have a new updated text DB. So simple as that. It's going to start utilizing these type of strategies inside this uh, demo version of the Haas. So. Once we do that, we can kind of move on. We have our first default strategies. We've made some changes. Now, this is just basically the simple things you can actually uh, do in default strategies. As you get in, you start creating setups in uh, automatic recognition, feature recognition. You can see that it'll start changing the strategy that picked by what you choose as far as, as far as that default strategy path. So we're <clears throat> we're going to move on to the tool crib setup. All right, 
inside the tool crib, some of the noteworthy items is tool crib setup. We're going to copy and paste existing tool cribs, and we're going to do a little bit of customizing tool crib ID per machine name. So as we do this, you'll see how we can kind of link it back to the machine if, as we need when we move on to the machine. So back to the default strategy, we're going to move back in. You see that SOLIDWORKS again kind of sets us up with three tool cribs. One of them, if you'd like, it's just simply straightforward empty, and that's what it is. Uh, the second tool crib actually has some functionality in it as far as cutters and mills that, that has been set up for you just as an example. Or you can kind of go back and, and pick up the inch or the uh, tool crib three, which is assembly. So, and go back to the empty one where you can just start adding your tool cribs as needed. However, we suggest that you take always take and copy any tool crib that you want to work from. We're going to copy it. And now we have this new copy sitting in here. You'll see that there's uh, four of them where there was three. We can comp add it, walk up here and do the edit. This could be for our Haas uh, VF3 machine. Oops. Define the stations. And once we click on this, we will have a, a new updated crib. So now we have our new crib that we can work from. And while we're in here, we might as well go ahead and start adding some tools. So we have several tools already added for us, flat end mills, center drills, countersink, ball nose end mill, um, several ball nose end mills, bores. So you can see there's, there's a nice set of tooling in here. The station has been set to a certain location. A substation has been set. Uh, we also have some other functionality that kind of lets us add some information to the, uh, the columns. So real quickly, we can actually do gauge offset X, gauge offset Y, and we can also remove some uh, key parameters, link offset. And then once we do that, we'll get a less amount of information here. Now, however, I, th I think the description is probably the, the biggest thing that you want to make sure that you update So in that process. So let's add some tools. So we've, we've got our, our tool crib set up. It's going to be a Haas VS3. VS3. We're going to, we've got about 20 stations. Uh, you can see we have 17 stations used, and we can remove some. We also have a probe in here. You may not have a probe on your machine. You, you can remove it. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be more drills that you're going to want to put in there. Uh, whatever your your tool cribs, and build as many as you as you can. So you have, you know, when you're you're doing a 3D block, you're going to want to uh, you know, add more ball nose, more pencil end mills where you can get in to the small areas and be able to cut out all that information. So be, <clears throat> expand your tool cribs as much as possible by the different types of operations that you're doing at your, your machine, at your shop. So that'll help you uh, grab a tool crib real quick. You may want to uh, flip from one tool crib to another, depending on what you're, you're programming. You may not have a lot of machines, but you need more tool cribs because of the functionality. And you want to have those set up for you. You don't want them to, you know, always be adding tools to the tool crib as you go. And you're going to run into some of that situation where, you know, you find you don't have a, a mill or end mill, ball nose. you got some other areas you need to clean up you're going to need to add some of that information. So after you get all this added, let's go ahead and add a tool. There's several tools in here that you can uh, choose from. Or drill, uh, flat end mill, ball end mill, nose end mill, etc. So there's, you can see there's a lot. But let's go ahead and add something like um, maybe a, a keyway. So <clears throat> These are the selected items that's in the database that you can grab from. So 
If we're going to grab any of them, let's get something that probably more likely something we'd use, something uh, with a D1 diameter of possibly maybe an inch and a half. So we can copy this um, into the, the data, or I'm sorry, I copied it. I needed to select it. And it's added in our tool crib. Now inside of here, we can actually set up the station. You really need to tell it what station you're going to be putting it, putting it into. Uh, station, substations, probably not as important. Uh, station ID is really not. Um, it's a keyway, so we're not going to really change that. We want to leave it the same. Uh, diameter offset, you can all add all the information you want in here to be able to, to uh, get what you need. And then once you do that, you want to make sure you save, because if you don't save, you're not really adding it. So inside our tool crib, we basically now have more tools. And we can kind of continue to add in some items like a lollipop tool. Let's grab that one and select it and add it. Save it. I'm sorry. Station uh, 19. The lollipop tool. We're not going to change that. And then save. So, really, should update the stations. That way, it's all updated uh, correctly. Now we have a couple uh, more we can add. Let's see. Uh, I noticed there was no face mill. Yeah, there's one face mill. Uh, user defined mills, you can actually bring those in, single point thread mills. I've seen one thread tool inside of there. Tap cutting. Uh, there is no center drill. So we'll grab a center drill. Uh, we do have some that are already active. Select that, add the station, which is 20. So we're out of stations at this point. And then save. All right, so we have updated some tool cribs. We've copied cutter tools. We've, we've moved, um, added the new ones in there. So let's uh, minimize this. So <clears throat> we've set up a new tool crib, and what we suggested was to uh, create as many tool cribs as you'd like, uh, just so you can really more customize that tool crib over the function that you're going to be cutting on that machine more than you know what the machine's going to be doing. So you know every machine is not going to have enough holders location, you know, pods to be able to um, get every tool you need. So you're going to be changing some tools out. Uh, the easiest thing to do is just select a tool crib. That tool crib can be given to your, your CNC programmer. So it'll help him get, um, get everything set up a lot quicker than uh, if he's adding them, you know, on the fly and in the blind. So the next one, we've already talked a little bit about the tool cribs. Now we're going to go into the machine and the post setup. So we want you to get creative, customize your machine ID. Depending on how many machines you have, you got to not, you got to know. And if if you don't know about the information as far as your machine duty, you need to find out because this will really change the speeds and feeds of all your cutters and the power of the machine being able to whether it mills a good pocket for you or breaks the cutter because it's you're pushing it too hard. Uh, we're going to set the default post, and we're going to set the tool, tool crib for each machine. So for every machine that you create, you can uh, set a, a certain tool crib for that. So let's uh, go back to our technology database. We're going to come up here, and we, we have machines. We have all the strategies that we've went through. You can see our new Haas VF3 um, tool crib. And now we want to create a machine. So by default, this is the guy that 
uh, is being selected every time you create a a mill turn setup for a, an inch, but it looks at this first. So let's just select this. And basically what we want to do is to copy that. You can see we have a copy of it. And now we want to tell it what it is. So OS VF3. Uh, it's a milling machine. You can call it whatever, you know, a lot of people call their machines a certain name. You can do whatever you need to do. Uh, inside of here, you're going to set your post, post processor that you have. You can see that there's several posts that comes with the machine or with uh, SolidWorks uh, CAM. And you can uh, set it to the ones you have. Just be careful because when you use a post processor, processor that comes with the software, you're going to want to um, make sure that you're not going to crash the machine. So set your Z levels up, uh, do a lot of air cutting, and um, test it out first. And if you need something more custom, we do uh, write posts for people, and we'd encourage you to just give us a shout and we'll, we'll certainly help out. So inside here, you're going to go through uh, the specifications. Uh, let's let's talk a little bit a little bit about uh, the specs. So we have our our Hoss. Uh, it's just big blue. Tip, typically they're not blue; they're red. So maybe I should say big red. Um, let's just say it's a 30 horse average index time 0.05. That's pretty close, but the more specific you are to how that machine runs, the better overall times that you're going to see. So uh, maximum feed rate, we're going to pretty much leave uh, a lot of this alone. Accelerated feed rate, 196, that's all good. Uh, table travel, uh, this machine's a little bit smaller. It's more of a 40. Uh, by 20 by 25 and something you really need to make sure you you turn on is uh, display tool toolpath at the GCO coordinates that's um, that's probably a good fail safe of having that turned on so this is where we're going to set our tool cribs what's going to be uh, sequenced with my host and this is all default if I would have made several tool cribs which I should have when I set that up, I set it up as Hoth VF3. I should have said, you know, like a 3D tool crib or mill, uh, mill drill, hole, that type of stuff. Uh, you can set up your tool cribs to mean different things, so it's easier to know when you, you pick them. Um, it's a Cat 40, a tool in the X index time, uh, spine swap 3.5, acceleration up. I'm not really going to change much of this. Um, so this is really getting into um, whether you're going to index in fourth and fifth axis um, and how it's going to rotate, no, ro no rotate, the angle it's going to rotate. So if you have a a fourth and fifth axis that you're going to add to the machine, you're going to want to add it there. And before you leave, well, let's go ahead and do one thing. Let's go ahead and check this as our default machine. It'll change it from inch to this uh, mill inch uh, hoth, and I'm going to save it. And everything updates like it should. So you won't see this update until you uh, first save. And you won't see it set to default if you don't check this default button. However, if you forget to, you can always come back up, reselect the, the uh, default machine, and click Save. So right now we have this set up to um, as the default machines. So it's really the machine, the only machine I got is custom to my company. I want to make sure that I can set up the, the correct speeds and feeds. Uh, I think I had 20, 
20 tool chains in it. That's why I kind of stopped at 20. And let's move on. So inside the saw works basically standard and also pro if you, if you well, standard because it's mill. Uh, you can see all the, these are the free posts that comes with SolidWorks Cam. And there might be one that, that works for you. Uh, we hope there, hope it is. If not, uh, we certainly can do the, the fine tweaking to help you out to get you past um, all this, uh, this posting issues. And we can pretty much uh, help you out in the, uh, the process of setting up your post. Uh, in the lathe, more of the SolidWorks Cam Pro. These are some of the posts that comes with that. And once you um, once you find one that's closed, we can we can set it up, or we can work with the manufacturer to get a post uh, wrote for you, written for you. So it's uh, really up to you how you want to proceed that. You can do it on your own, or we can help you out. So uh, Don Glasky pretty much takes care of that. He's pretty good at it. So we we welcome you to uh, call the support team uh, at technicalsupport.com or technical.support at cati.com. And that'll, that'll get the ball rolling where we can uh, get a post uh, laid out to whether we can we can help you or not. Which I'm sure we can. So, uh, what have we went, went through so far? We talked a little bit about default strategies. Uh, we've talked a little bit about, about tool crib setup, copy and added cutters, machine setup. So, we've done a lot of the peripheral stuff, kind of get you started. It'll get you going to where you can kind of get your machine set up and ready to go. Uh, the last area is update TechDB to a new version. So. What ends up happening is, like I said before when we were talking earlier, was uh, 2019 TechDB, you're not gonna be able to just drag that TechDB over into uh, 2020. It, it's not going to work. Uh, you'll get an error. And to do that, we're, we're gonna talk about how we go about updating the versions. So let's uh, continue on. So. Update TechDB after a version update. What we're talking about, when you go from uh, 2019 to 2020, that's a version update. So we, we need you to uh, update that. And again, the technical support side can help you out with this process. We always wanna create a backup. That's the security of it. You put too much time into setting up your tool cribs, uh, setting up some of your strategies to uh, help you um, save time at the at the programming uh, seat. So uh, we're gonna select the, uh, this is how we can do it inside of SOLIDWORKS. We're gonna select the TechDB icon inside of SOLIDWORKS, which is on the large command manager. And that's what the icon looks like, or we're gonna open it from the app. And that's a TechDB-exe. So let's uh, let's just start with SolidWorks. So, and I, I just want to show you what we have here. When you extract machinable features, basically what you get is the strategies that was set up prior to what we just made changes to. So you can see that it comes in rough, rough, rest, finish. And if we generate this, let's just go ahead and uh, we'll just go ahead and generate all of them. You notice that we have several roughs and finished contours. So we got a, a rough, rough contour finish. So we have three selections. This is your rough, rough finish. So when we were back at the uh, CamWorks uh, feature tree, you notice that it said, this is our strategy, rough, rough, rest, finish. Uh, once we generated the operation plan, uh, we are able to get the functionality of the of the part. So you'll notice that, let's just grab, 
I'm going to grab three of these and just go ahead and generate the toolpath. Basically, you can see that it generated the first one, it did not generate the second one, and it generated the third one. So basically what's happening is it's picking up the first profile, it's doing all the roughing that this quarter inch cutter can do. It found that when it looked at from this cutter, this profile, to this profile, that there was nothing left for this cutter to cut unless you change the size of the, the end mill. Uh, and then when you went into finish, it basically took care of all the finishing. So rough, rough finish was not really a practical solution for that. How did we get there? We got there because we extracted machinable features. So that's where it all came from. Um, that's where it all set up at. Let's, uh, Notice we have a VF3, select that. So we're going to switch um, to the VF3. We selected it. Uh, the tool crib, I'm still on tool crib two, but I do have a, a VF3 tool crib. Uh, and select OK. So now I'm set up to the hot. And my tool crib that I'm using as the, the new tool crib. So that's just I guess it's better. All right. Let me add it to definition of it. All right, so um, me having SOLIDWORKS open in the background and opening the, the uh, database, uh, didn't update the database until I closed or reopened, so. All right, so the technology database update. So we're, we're going to look at going to the settings. And inside of here, import database, link database. So what we're, what we're looking for is we want to import a database. And it says, hey, it, we recommend SOLIDWORKS not to be running while we're updating all this functionality. So Browse to the location of your customized database to import. So we want to import one other than the one that is currently there. So I am going to close this. Um, now we're going to save it. And we're going to browse to program data. SolidWorks. Hours 2019, TechDB, and this is the TechDB that I had all my work into, and I want to go through and select import. Basically, it says make sure solvers are not running, proceed to uh, import. So this is the link database inside of 2020. This is the database that we want to import, and we're going to start importing. So what we want to see is a nice little green button up here saying that it's updating. As you can see, it starts the procedure to update and it'll follow through. Also, we're doing the mill data, the turn data, and we're creating a backup of the current one. So SOLIDWORKS is basically taking care of that. But however, we, we would suggest that you um, Uh, make that back up before you start. So I've just loaded 2020 and I'm importing my database from 2019.
progress bar seems to go slow, but it looks like migration was successful. So now we have everything that I had into the 2019 is now into the uh, 2020 database, and you should be able to see all your functionality. So um, to be honest, I don't know what you're going to see different other than a clean database because I had already cleared it also. All right, so we've covered the mill default strategies, the tool crib setup, copy and add cutters, machine setup, update tech DB to the new version.